So expect that uh, all of you are registered student, right? Anyone from you just want to, how do you say, uh, join the class but not registered uh, this, this, this dynamics and vibration course? No? Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay. And one more thing. Uh, all of you are a uh, second semester student, and some may be a PhD student. Am I correct? Uh, I'm a master student. Sir. Okay. So, let, let me try this one. Okay. Uh, the, this course is, uh, as you see, right, the dynamics and vibration. We are trying to discuss with you the concept, the theoretical background about the dynamics and vibrations, focusing on the circular dynamics analysis. Yeah, mainly is analysis, not clearly related with the design. Therefore, what I expect from all of you after you complete this course is to be able to analyze any building, any structures under the dynamic loading. Whatever you mention the loading is, like the earthquake or the wind loading or the traffic induced vibration, excitation or loadings, or, or maybe some special kind of impact loading, you would be able to do so. Therefore today I would like to start the discussion with you, however, I think it's better to see first the see the bus, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. It's bilingual, right? And yeah, you so you have the both Thai and English language in this document. Seeing that we we take the discussion with you every week, uh Two times, right? Every Tuesday and Thursday morning, start from 10.30 till 12. And which this kind of thing we will try to discuss with you about the, how to say, the dynamic system modeling, the equations of motion, the analysis of system with a single degree of freedom system, multi degree freedom system, the free and false vibration, Determination of the natural frequency, the distributed masses, the, 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 the mass system, the response spectrum method, the analysis using the numerical techniques, as well as some basic principle of the nonlinear system. And hopefully, uh, after you complete the course, at least you need to be able to think about what would be the appropriate modeling of the system. And the second is, you would be able to transform your physical model, appropriate physical model to a, an effective, I would say effective mathematical model. And you will see later that the mathematical model of this subject of dynamics and vibration of the structures it's mainly described by the differential equations. And with that or those differential equations, almost of them are the second order differential equations. And the way we represent our structure by the mathematical model using the second order differential equations you will see later that you have maybe two choices. One is the ordinary differential equations and another is partial differential equations. Of course, all of you, maybe you, we have discussed about this in the applied mathematics before, maybe the last, last year, right? I do remember that it's pretty easy 
for us to solve the ordinary differential equations. But somehow the partial differential equation, even though it's rather complicated system, but the way we solve them using the numerical techniques is still available, but it's not so easy, right? You have to transform, many times we have to transform the partial differential equation to the uh, equivalent ordinary differential equations. Some of the idea, main idea is using the separation of variable. But in this dynamics and vibration course, I think you will learn how it's different, which one is better or appropriate for you, for your case, okay? And hopefully you can make a good decision once you be the engineer or be an expert in this field after some year that you have some experience and practice, then we come up with the, how to solve them, okay? There's some techniques, of course. And one of the techniques is quite popular. It's a numerical techniques. With me, maybe I will explore somehow using the MATLAB software programs to help us to solve these kind of differential equations and see what our building move with time under the dynamic loading. But with Dr. Chatpan, the system become more complicated. Okay, let me explain you the first part you will join with my discussion. It's mainly about the single degree freedom only. Therefore, the only unknown is only one degree of freedom. So easy. But with that chat pan, uh, is the second part. You will move on to a system that is more realistic in which the building of the bridge will be represented by the multi degree of freedom system, many degree of freedom systems. Therefore, the system become more complicated, right? And in terms of mathematics, you have to solve those equations, uh, the differential equations simultaneously. There are many equations, many differential equations that you need to be so, uh, you need to solve them simultaneously because they are all coupled. Okay, that's the background and basic idea. Okay, so the first part with me, you will learn about the single degree freedom system and the many kind or many type of loading, dynamic loadings. And after that, you will learn with Dr. Chapan. The, what I said is the multi degree freedom system, right? And as well as the response spectrum, you know, something about the nonlinear or inelastic system. Yeah, many like that. As mentioned already in the course syllabus, this document. Okay, if you have time, please take a look and see what we're gonna discuss with you this year or this semester. Before I start, we, you're quite familiar with my discussion, right? Okay, during the, the, the discussion, the lecture, I, I will find times to time the occasion to take a quiz with you. I will provide you the, what I call the Padlet, right? And ask you a very small questions that related with what I have discussed with you so far, and maybe ask you some small calculations so that you can respond in very short time, very quick, maybe within a, just a couple minutes, like a five sec, uh, five minutes, and you could just complete your uh, answer and send me back to the Padlet. Okay, the, 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 what they call the dashboard, right? So that they can monitor what is your understanding, whether you are 
understand it correctly or not. Uh, some of you may be still confused. Even though listen to me, maybe it's easy to listen, right? But it, sometimes it's, even though it feels logical or rational, quite easy to understand, but sometimes when I ask you to do something or to apply the idea or to apply the understanding, the knowledge, maybe you find some difficulty. And that might cause you to have a question back after the class or maybe at the end of the class we will have some time right for the questions and answer so this first class or uh, today lecture or discussion i would like to start with this slide the introduction and today i will try to finish this slide i don't know how many pages it has but Okay, I will try to finish before noon and let me have some uh, minutes to discuss. Uh, you can have a question with me. Okay, so as the introduction of the dynamic and survivation, today I will somehow explain the cause and the consequence of the structures and the, the dynamic loadings, maybe. Then we will chat, discuss, or uh, just a very brief discussion on the dynamics analysis and design. Then at the end, I will touch a little bit about the vibration control technology, which is still, how to say, uh, a very interesting field of research that is take, how to say, a very, very long time. It's quite popular. Even though during my years, uh, I was the student 20 years, 30 years ago, right? It's an active field of research of this world, but the real application is still very small application in some country only, like uh, in Japan, and some application of vibration control, maybe in USA, in European country, right? And, we found very small cases in Thailand, for example, because our engineer may be not familiar with this kind of technology. But I can tell you about this, that if you can really understand this technology quite well, and you would like to apply this technology to your country or your problems, your applications or your buildings or your structure, sometimes we, we, we get the benefit of applying the vibration control system. For example, when recently I um, was appointed as a designer of the Thailand and China, what they call the high-speed real project. Okay, and we found that to design the, what they call the viaduct. Viaduct is a kind of the elevated structure, elevated bridge, right? That be the structure to to lay on the, the track work of the train or the high speed train on top. And we found that we need to control the vibration or the the movement of the the bridge to be a very, very small movement under the braking load from the high speed train. And if the conventional uh, idea of from um, many practical engineers in Thailand, most of them are thinking about increasing the stiffness, increasing the, the, the sizing of the pier, the columns. And that's very expensive, I would tell you. On the other hand, my idea to solve this problem is not using the conventional like uh, increase the sizing of the columns, increase the signal on the concrete. I apply what they call the damper. I introduce the damper to the design. Even though the cost of damper, the damper you will see later, it's kind of a hydraulic systems. The, the, what they call the, 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 what they call the 
the hydraulic uh, choke up or what they call the suspension. If it, if you look at the car, there's a kind of a suspension system. The thing is like that. I apply the damper, and they found we can save a lot of money. You're talking about the more than five hundred million US dollar just for the project starting from uh, Bangsu to Don Mueang Station. Okay, so even though it's not the scope of this study, this lecture, this course, but I will uh, tell you that you need to have a very good background about the dynamics and vibration so that you can jump into the vibration control idea or vibration control analysis effectively, okay? So this card will, will play as the background, fundamental uh, knowledge for engineers who would like to know his structure or his buildings. What would them will be have under the loading, like the wind, the earthquake, or the impact loading? Which are the knowledge like this, I would say it's really difficult for any engineer to approximate or estimate what would be the maximum movement of the building under the wind loading. Even though we can uh, simplify the wind loading as the static loading, or we can simplify the earthquake loading to be as the like uh, lateral static loading as we used to in the year of maybe 1960. At that time, we don't have a very good, we don't have good computer. So many engineers do so. Treat the earthquake at the static loading. And I would say the result that they obtain is very far from actual response of the building or the exact solution. That's why I think it's quite important for you who interest on the dynamics of the structure to learn, okay? And as you see, this is a building, the bridge, the bridge very long span sometimes, just the, this slide show you the Hakashi Kaikyo, right? And this, how do you say, two kilometers but the, for the main span. The bush, the building, the bush project at, in Dubai, you see the height of this building almost one kilometer. It's 800 something meters already today. But still, there's equations. Not only the equations, I would say the dreams. We engineers and they are the people, especially the business people, investor, they keep eye on the development of our civil engineering uh, knowledge. They expect someday we would be able to build some structure that the height is not limited. You can have the tall building with one kilometer as in this figure. You can have the tall building with two kilometers height, three kilometers height, I'm not so sure if you have three kilometers high, maybe you, 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 you don't have the oxygen. You know the oxygen, right? Human need the oxygen for our breed. And in a very, very top level from the ground, the air in the air, the oxygen quantity is very low. Therefore, maybe it's not good for human to go so far like that. It's especially the bird, they don't climb to that height. It's too, how do you say, it's, the oxygen is not so, so much, right? Okay, maybe there's a limit of the people, the human being, that one kilometer, two kilometers could be the maximum we dream for. Uh, but at least when we dream something about this, the building of the bridge with a very long span, 
we face with the problem. And one of the big problems is about the construction technique. How to construct this type of the very tall structure. Remember, if you mix a concrete at the ground level, you have to transport your concrete, your fresh concrete to the top of the building to pull in the, how do you say, the, the roof of the building, for example, and is at the height of two kilometers. And you know how, how fast we can transport vertically the fresh concrete from the ground level to the top of the building. It takes a lot of time. Okay, and sometimes the setting time is not allowed. The thing like this, it's happened a lot. The tower crane, what the type of the overhead crane, the tower crane should be used for this type of the structure. And remember the wind is very, very strong on the top height. Therefore the workers can do their work in the very strong wind conditions. Such kind of thing have to be uh, really think about and need to be considered carefully. And the second one, the main problem of the second item is about the earthquake and wind. We found very difficult to build a building, a very tall building against the wind because the movement on the top would be very, very large. You can imagine that if you're on the board, you live on this building, really tall building, and every night when you go to bed, you want to sleep, right? And you feel some checking, some vibration, some vibration of the building. Okay, so it's very hard for some people to be, to get a good sleep and the, the vibration condition like that. Okay. And some more things, we found some vibration problems in daily life. For example, if you're crossing the, the bridge as a pedestrian bridge, some of the bridge, especially uh, the, the bridge in front uh, of uh, Chulalongkorn University campus, if you have time, I'm sorry, we, we have the online session, therefore you, maybe you don't have time to visit the bridge in front of the campus. If you want to cross the Payatai Road from engineering uh, campus to the main library or to the uh, uh, how to say, another side of the campus, right? You, you need to cross over the steel trust, one of the PSN steel, steel trust, and that bridge, the vibration is quite high, especially if you have the bus or the truck, okay, crossing beneath uh, on the road, you will feel some strong vibration. You can try, okay, if you have chance. And tall building also have a case like this, the vibrations under the wind, under the storm, some building close to the train station or to the, how to say, the train tracks, you feel some vibrations and cause a problem. One of the example I can provide you a clear idea is the, we have the hospital close to the, railways and the distance from that building the hospital building from the railway is only maybe uh, 100 meters i think and inside this hospital they try to install what they call the mr machine you know the mr machine is what they call it magnetic resonance machine maybe mr i'm not so sure but they, they use for the scanning they, they want to scan your brain, they want to scan your organs inside your body. They put you on the bed and send you to one small tunnel in that machine and do the scanner, okay? And this MR scan machine is really, very sensitive to the vibrations. If during the scanning, there's a train pass by, 
the image that created by the machine will be uh, how do you say to be really blurry it's not clear so the doctor medical doctor they cannot interpret from the scan sound like that so they come to to our university and to me to solve this problem and we find the way to reduce the vibration for that flaw and that machine under the train operation that to close to them okay such kind of, of thing could happen and it cause the problem a lot and today i think uh if you touch the wind the earthquake the moving vehicle the human force and others for the earthquake i think it's quite easy for you to understand right you have seen a lot from the uh youtube uh the news once the earthquake occurred we found a lot of the building damage and something like a, a, a lot of dead people and injured uh, severe damage to the buildings and structures, something like that. This is this, this is uh, the lake court, the little lake court of the cloud motions. And if you can carefully look at this uh, slide, you can see that this is a uh, how do you say the difference is at the cloud level is on the top, right? And the second signal is the depth of 16 meters and the third from top, okay? The third from top is 32 meters and the last one, the below figures, the fourth one is the 83 meters. See, they have the acceleration. During the earthquake, the, this earth induced the accelerations. And if my building is sit on this earth, this ground, my building could check by the earthquake. And that will cause a problem to our building. It might damage, and even if the collapse of the building and cause a lot of dead people. Okay, this one, I think, this is a public, uh, not a public one, it's a PDF, right? So no problem. I will switch to the clip of this because it's quite important to, to see. Let me do the new slide, do the screen a bit. Uh, okay. Can you see the, the video clip? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Okay. Let, let me explain you a bit before. This is the, the building in LA, I think, Los Angeles, USA. California, right? There is an earthquake in 1994, maybe the Northridge one, I think. And uh, this building is quite special in which they install some sensor accelerometer at the top of the building, at the middle, and at the basement. Therefore, after the earthquake, you can see the real motion of the building. They play back the vibration and see how it's moved under the real earthquake. And this is the vibration of this building, you see? It's not easy. It's quite complicated. There's some bending, torsion, and twisting along both X and Y direction together. Right? So it seems that the analysis, it's implied that the analysis of the building under the earthquake could be not easy. Right? because you have to estimate how your building will move under the earthquake. And you would check the safety of your building and design your building to be an optimum structure that can resist the earthquake safely, but don't pay much money.
uh, the effect of the earthquake can do like the car failure structure vibrations in the midlands life flat and fine we mainly focus on the structure vibrations i think because the main topics that we will discuss in this lecture i think it's just this one right um so maybe i put the pink card but however you see the effect of the earthquake is not only the structure vibration is induce also the ground failures, tsunami, landslide, flood, and fire. This is a consequence of the earthquake, right? It goes very quick. It's not so difficult for you to just see and feel the damage and the ground failure for the wind. For the wind, I think. You know about the hurricane or you know about the typhoon, right? It's a cost a severe damage and loss of life as well. Okay, and this is a one small clip, the new Tacoma. Maybe this clip. Oh. You see this bridge here? Right? Can you hear the sound from the, the video? No, I can't. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. No problem. But, but at least you, I think, you can see that the uh, vibration is very large and then it's collapse, right? And for sure, the data we have from this bridge, Can, can, can you still hear my voice? Uh, yeah, Rajan. Okay, okay. What I would like to say is that uh, the bridge like this, 1970, right? They just opened the bridge to normal traffic for just a couple of months, three months, four months, I think, and then collapsed. And during the day, the bridge collapsed, they found no type uh, no, and that is a hurricane yeah no hurricane in that area not that all just small wind that blow quite what they call is the season wind not so high speed but it it found the uh, it induced the collapse of the building um, at the bridge. So this is one of the issue that quite uh, popular among civil engineer during that day, that that years. They learn a lot of wind engineering and so on. And right now we have a lot of uh, knowledge about the wind structure interactions from them. Another is this one, maybe another clip. This is the case from, I think, uh, last year. Let me try to open. Why? Oh, sorry. Which one? Which one? Okay, this one, I think. Okay. You see the vibration, right? They cannot allow the traffic to open the to to cross the bridge when the wind is very high speed like this but i look it's not so high speed right just a normal wind because if you look at the the trees in the mountain and surrounding area not the storm not the movements of the 
high speed wind. It's just a normal wind speed. And you see the vibration of the, the bridge very large and cannot allow the, the car and the traffic to cross over. This is the vehicle vibrations. Now, sometimes the vibrations from some activities close to your structures, like uh, driving of the uh, power system. The trains, the vibration. Uh, among them, this is a pedestrian bridge, but a very famous bridge. Uh, if you have chance to visit London, uh, over Thameslink River, you have the the bridge across the Thames River. Over here, it has the name of the uh, London Bridge or Millennium Bridge. I'm sorry, they call Millennium Bridge because it's uh, open in the year 2000, and unluckily, there's a very last vibration. Let me see, I think I should have also the video for this. London Millenniums. You see the this engineer who involved the project, right? Uh, okay. They try to explain that's because the people work on the bridge is kind of a lateral force, induce some lateral force. Okay, something like that. You see. You say like a uh, people when you work you have the same step right left light left right so the crowd of people will induce the force lateral force to the bridge in the same phase of time if go left go light left light left light like this right and that is a big force on the bridge and cause the vibration Okay, should be okay. So as a solution of this bridge, they install what they call the tune mass damper. They try to find a solution, effective solution. And it seemed that using the damper to reduce the lateral vibration of this bridge could be the most effective uh, solution, yeah. The four vibrations, the stadium vibration, concert hall vibrations, you can expect something like this. This is the, uh, the way they remove the building, we call the demolition by the, the, the explosion, right? The explosive uh, stuff like the TNT, the C4 or something like this. Have this one. Maybe. Okay, oh, still, can I need to download this first, sorry. Okay. You see that, use the TNT, this project, I think. Mm -hmm. 
something like this. <laughs> Even though the the thing like this, uh, we as an engineer, a civil engineer, we're very happy to build something. But when we destroy the structures, we want to remove them quickly, safely. One of the ideas is using the explosive stuff and do the job like that, the video that I shown to you. Uh, for sure, if you would like to do this kind of thing, you need to know the dynamic analysis very well because you have to compute. If you put the, what they call the TNT, right? The explosive stuff to this column, to that column, to those columns, which one you have to destroy first, which one you have to delay the explosion for a few seconds, which one comes second, which one comes the third, which one comes the fourth, such kind of thing have to be obtained from the analysis, dynamic analysis, when you remove some columns from your building and the building will falling down. And this behavior is explained by the dynamics of the structures. Right? It's a movement of your building. It's the falling of the floor, something like that. So this is still very, very difficult, a complicated problem to me as, at least. I found very difficult, but, uh, but based on this, or uh, today technology of the computer software, I think it's quite, it's quite uh, feasible. Even though before engineer using the experiment ex uh, and, and experience to decide such kind of thing, but today they can use the computer to help them to design small amount of the uh, explosive stuff because it's quite expensive to, to do the job, something like that. And this is ah, uh, this is another project, but this one is uh, done by our university. I was uh, contacted from USA embassy, the US embassy, try to do the research in Thailand like this. They want to build uh, what they call the the the, the embassy building, especially the embassy French. Uh, there's a, the French allow the, the building, right? To protect them inside, to protect them from the bomb, the car bomb. They are afraid of some years ago, the US ambassador really feel this uh, Southeast Asia is not safe for them maybe. They are afraid of the bomber come with the, the car and put the bomb behind and, and, and crash to the ambassador uh, building. So they want to do the research. This research I have did in the in in, in Thailand. They, they want to they want me to build or design the concrete wall like this and impacted by the truck. And they need to do what they call the very spatial dynamic analysis for this problem. See whether the, the wall is uh, uh, stiff enough, the wall is strong enough, break is not collapsed, how much is moved under the impact, something like that. Yeah. And to show you maybe this script, okay, US embassy. Oh, no. Yeah. So we bought the truck and put some stuff behind with just the mask. See, and we have to do the test like this. Crash on the wall and see how the wall moves under this the impact loading. Okay. Really hard for me to set up the, the test like this because if I fail, 
I have to control the speed of the truck. I have to control the position, the truck impact on the wall. If this uh, parameter is not well complied with the standard of testing, maybe I have to build a new wall and bought a new truck and cost a lot of money on my project. So it's quite a challenge to me, I remember. Yeah, something like that. Then, oh, the, uh, the loading like this, we never calculate yet. It's a kind of a total list line, okay, many years ago, New York. Oh, uh, if you uh, enjoy the thing with the military, also they have a research using the dynamics analysis of the structure and the, the inside the bomb, something like that. So you see, as a civil engineers, now I think at least you, you, you will know that we need to really understand the vibration and dynamics of our structures. Otherwise, we cannot predict or design our structure under many types of loading, right? Dynamics loading. How much it moves with time? What is the maximum diffraction? What is the maximum movement? What is the maximum moment and shears in the building, in the structures? And if you don't know that, you cannot design our structure correctly. You know that, right? And it's not safe to do the job. But if your analysis is not so accurate, you have to pay more money to have more and more safety factor, right? In to your design, to be over design, large over design, something like that. And sometimes lead to the unsafe, unsafe condition. What I try to say is, because you don't know the exact solution, you just, uh, how do you say, you just uh, expect from your approximation very simple analysis, very approximated solution that your building will move to the left hand side. But in fact, in reality, maybe, maybe the exact solution is they move to the right hand side. The direction is not correct like this. It caused the thing to be very, very dangerous, right? Your building or your design is unsafe under such kind of loading. So no doubt, we need the real understanding or close to reality, how to analyze or to predict how our structures and buildings behave under the dynamic loadings. That would be the main topic of this course or this discussion, okay? And the idea of that is we will start with the good modeling from the real building. This is, for example, it's uh, Malaysia, right? In Kuala Lumpur, this turbine tower need to be replaced. Let me let me draw you this. This is, is a Leo structure. It can be the buildings, can be the bridge, or can be any structures you're talking about. You have to represent this Leo building or Leo structures by what I call is a, maybe this is number one, starting from the Leo structures. You need to represent them by what I call number two is the physical model. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I will pay some time on this explanation and discussion because I found, how do you say, you, you cannot easily find uh, the the idea or expansion like this in the textbook 
So let me take some time with you, okay? And the third is called the mathematical model. Okay, starting from number one, the Leo structures, you have to thinking about the physical model. Which physical model will be a great or accurately represent the Leo structure of yours? In this figure for the building like this, I think normally we have two choices. One is the MDOF and SDOF. The SDOF is a single degree of freedom system. The MDOF is a multi degree of freedom system. Okay? So, 2.1, of course, is more accurate to me because I will represent the Leo structure or Leo building using many number of flaws, many number of uh, degree of freedoms in the physical model of my, instead of using only one or just a single degree freedom system. Therefore, 2.1 is always better than 2.2. In terms of accuracy, yes. But in terms of uh, complexity, difficulty for the modeling and analysis, I afraid that the uh, 2.2 it more it easier, right? Easier and, and it's quite convenient for engineer to analyze the system if you use the model of 2.2, just a single degree freedom system. But you have to pay for that, you lost the accuracy. Okay. From number two, the physical model you use to represent your building, you will replace the physical model you have by a mathematical model, number three. And the mathematical model for both system, for both physical models, both 2.1 and 2.2, can be represented by second order differential equations. And from the particular physical model, our mathematical model used to represent 2.1 and 2.2, both of them are ordinary differential equation, like the yellow equation I put for you. Ordinary differential equations, second order. Okay, since you have only one dependent variable. I'm sorry, one independent variable, right? That is time t. Only times is independent variable here. If I increase the number of degree of freedom in my physical model, physical system, still that number of unknown, dependent unknown, that is about you, right? Is increased. Number of you is increased. This is what I try to say is this. This is you number one, you number two, you number three, you number four and you number five, explaining the movement of the building under the earthquake or the wind, what you interest or you consider. Okay? But for the single freedom system, maybe you have only you, you number one only. One unknown in your system. So the mathematical model to represent single degree freedom system 2.2 is only one unknown. So the system, uh, the equation 
uh, mathematical model, like the second order differential equation, is very simple. It's easy, right? Only one unknown. But if you have the u1 to u5, as in the case of multi diffidum system, your u vector here, maybe you can imagine, is consists of u number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five as the displacement vector. Something like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So you have to solve this mathematical model under the earthquake, under the wind, you will describe what would be your force f of time t, a force vector. And then you solve this one, okay? Normally we use a computer to help solving by numerical techniques and you obtain the u uh, as the primary unknown. Once you obtain u mean, you know how your building move under the earthquake and under the wind with time. And from that u vector, after you know about this, this you can exp uh, you can estimate what gonna be the maximum displacement, but maximum solid drift, what is the maximum shear force, maximum moment in your building, in the columns. Okay. Turn our interest to the bridge structure. For the bridges. The idea is quite the same. Starting from Leo bridge or Leo structures, you have two choice. The first one, the physical model that you use to represent. The first one is a multi degree freedom system. And the second one, you use the single degree freedom system. Okay. And both of them will lead to number three, that is the mathematical model. In this case, again, you see it's represented by the second order differential equations. Okay. Both of them look the same in terms of mathematical model. But physical model, they come from different system. They come from different structure. They come from different model. But in terms of mathematics, all of them are the same. They're quite common in which you will see uh, maybe later, I will explain to you about what the M is, the mass metric. Maybe I put that here and there that you can have some idea. This is about the mass. This is what they call the damping. And K, the stiffness. Okay. The mass, the damping, and the stiffness play a very important role in the vibration of the structures. U is the displacement vector. U dot is the velocity vector. And the U double dot are the acceleration vector. But the building and the bridge had the same mathematical model, even though you define different physical model, but all of them come to the end with the same mathematical model. After you obtain the mathematical model is the step of solving them. From this equation of motion, okay, it's a name. This equation has a big name called the equation of motion. The equation that explain the motion of the structure, we call it equations of motion. To solve the equations of motions, that you have learned the mathematics before, we have the mass, we have the stiffness, we have the damping of them, three of them are constant metrics. The mass never change with time, the damping, then the stiffness never change with time. With some assumption, we have the assumption, big assumption that 
the vibration is quite small. If the vibration is very large, we can expect the non-linearities, like the concrete cracking. We can expect some yielding in the steel member. And if it happened, the stiffness of your building will change with time. In that case, we call that is a nonlinear analysis, it's an inelastic analysis. You need to employ the different technique to solve the system like that. But with me, maybe I focus on the linear system in which uh, the mass, the damping, and the stiffness matrices of parameters is defined as the constant parameter and never change with time. So the primary unknown is the U, U dot and the U double dot. We try to solve this the equation of motion and the second, or in other words, the second order differential equation, right? To obtain what is the U. And after we obtain the deformation U vector, you can calculate the internal forces and you can design your circular member accordingly. Okay, so with this one, solving the equation of motion, we will learn with me, since I will focus on only single degree freedom system. Oh, let, let me explain you a bit about the single degree freedom system first. Okay. Uh, the physical model of 2.1, the multi-degree freedom system, you will learn with Dr. Chapan, the second part of this uh, course. But 2.2, the single degree freedom system, I will discuss with you, okay? The first part of this subject will be study only single degree freedom system. Why we have to learn the single degree freedom system? Frankly speaking, this is a simplest system, simplest dynamic system. So we prefer to start with the thing is simple, and then you build up your knowledge to the thing is more complicated and more complicated, okay? The second is, even though the system is a single degree freedom system, I would say it's quite important to learn and get to know the system like this. Since in the real applications of the knowledge of dynamic of structures, for example, if I would like to decide one building, one tall building in Bangkok, uh, subjected to the earthquake, I will use uh, the software. The name is something like the ETAPS, uh, SAP 2000, Lobot, uh, MyDask, uh, many software available today for uh, the dynamic analysis of the building under the earthquake. Of course, I use a finite element analysis. And of course, the model, my physical model to represent the real building is 2.1, multi-degree freedom system. And of course, after I learn how to use the software, I can calculate what would be the vibration, what would be the maximum moment of my building under the earthquake. Okay? With the knowledge of dynamics and vibration, I have learned from my university, of, I have learned myself. But the problem is, once I obtain the solution, saying that my building, the loof displacement would be uh, 50 centimeters under the earthquake, this high earthquake. The starting diff between uh, floor number 30 and 31, the maximum is maybe five centimeters. The base shear at the cloud four columns would be something like a 
200 kilonewtons. The moment could be something like a thousand um, kilonewton uh, meter, something like this. How can I know? How can I check the result that I obtained from the computer software or programs that is correct? Whether it's correct or not, how to check that? You will find the difficulty like this in your careers. And me, myself, my case, I use a single degree freedom system to estimate the result. I do it by another computer or another software like the MATLAB. Or maybe I just do the hand calculation because it's easy. You will learn and you see after you understand it quite easy. And I can estimate what would be the maximum loop displacement of my building under the earthquake, under the wind, using the single degree freedom physical model to represent the building and obtain a very simple mathematics and obtain the simple solution, approximate solution. And I often use my single degree freedom system solution to recheck the obtained uh, quantities or obtained solution from the finite element analysis of software, okay? That's why I think at least um, the good engineers, uh, I think we, sh we should have the knowledge of single degree freedom system and use them to at least check uh, the result from a really complicated analysis like the from the computers and also using the single degree freedom system to create your own knowledge about the behavior of the building or the structure so that you can have the, a better idea or a good idea to, to be like a, to, to find a good solution of your system. For example, when they say, if you want to apply the damper or you want to say this building could be effective if you can reduce the mass, or if you can increase the stiffness, why don't you start with the single degree freedom first to check your idea, to check uh, your, how to say, your, 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 your vision or your imagination. Then put everything into the computer. It's very complicated, right? You take a lot of time on the finite element when you do the uh, modeling of the building, real building, tall building in the computer. It takes some day. But single degree freedom system, it's easy, maybe just a five minute, 10 minutes, you already obtain what you want, okay? That's why I think we learn single degree freedom system because it's simple and we will learn the behavior of the system from that simple system first before we go or jump to the multi degree freedom system on the second part with Dr. Chuck Pine. And I think also the application, one of the benefit of learning a single degree freedom system is to use for the recheck of the result when you use the computer, okay? It could be, uh, okay, this is about the software available today. And there are many more from this list, I think. Ah, the last part that I would like to discuss today it's about the vibration control. The vibration control is quite, quite uh, is the field of research in which many engineers, researchers try to find the devices, the technique that can control the vibration of our structure. Okay, beyond uh, not they, they have the idea not only increasing the size of the member, not only increasing the number of the steel reinforcement, uh, not only increasing the stiffness by increasing the, the young modulus of the materials. They find another way of solution by 
uh, what they call the passive control, active control, and semi-active control. The word passive, active, and semi-active mean uh, the system if you call passive control means you don't put any energy or power to the control system. The control system will work even though the electric electricity is shut down or you don't plug in any power into the devices. Okay, it's work by itself me 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 mechanically. Uh, the active system, uh, active control is another system, a control system in which you have to plug in the power to the control system or the devices so that they will active. Under the earthquake or under the wind, they will try to exert or apply the force on the opposite election of the actual loading in real time and uh, we will be trying to minimize the vibration of your building, something like that. This is an active control system. The reactive control system is the share the benefit of the passive and the active. They say, okay, even though I include and I plug in some power or energy to the control system and devices, but the energy I plug in or I input is very small. Very small energy required for the system like this, but still they require some energy, even though it's very small. Okay, that's why the name is semi or semi active control. The passive control is like this. Oh, this is uh, the damper I mentioned before. This is uh, what the name is a uh, viscous damper. You see the sizing way, very large. In this case, they put on the stadium loop trust, right? The trust of the, I don't know the name of the stadium, I forgot. But you see, they put just one member, one steel member on the steel trust, loop trust. Once I introduce this damper at one member of the trust, steel trust, I will be uh, increased what they call the damper, the damping. That's why the term here, let me go back to the mathematical model first. The term C here, the damping term, this term, the C become larger number. When the C constant is larger, you can expect smaller vibrations. You will learn and see it later that increase the C, parameter C, the damping coefficient, will reduce the vibration. Okay? So this is one of the idea. They increase the damping by the passive control technique like this. Another passive control technique is the what they call the TMD. TMD, the, the full name of the TMD is this, is the tune mast damper. It's the damper that using the mast which tuned to the building, fine tune to the building. So you, you have to tuning this system before you start to work. Okay, the same system, same concept of the tune mass damper is installed also in Taipei 101. You see just the big mass hanging on the roof. And when the storm come, the building is moved left, right, left, right. The pendulum and the tune mass damper is reacting like the pendulum, right? You swing back and forth, back and forth. And you know, if you fine tune the length of the cable correctly, okay, assume you have the fixed mass, M, this is the mass. This is the length, L, of the cable that you're hanging the system on. For the L, 
tuning out L optimum. If you can find the appropriate L that has the the, the put the tune mass system, the, the pendulum system having the same natural frequency with the building. If you can tune your tune mass damper to have the same or close to with the natural frequency or period of the building, then this system will call tuned mass damper. And if just you install the system like this on your building, when the building start to vibrate, some of the energies, vibration energy that make your building move from the wind will uh, how to say will transfer into the tune the TMD. So the TMD will swing very large. And that means some of the vibration energy from your building will be extracted, will be subtracted by the TMD already. So the remaining energy in your building will be smaller and it make your building vibration smaller as well. Okay, this is the idea of the passive control. The active control is, is not popular. Let me finally tell you that even though this idea is, how do you say, uh, invented in maybe 30 years, 40 years ago, there are just a few buildings in this world install the active control system. And I do believe that the system like this, it has only in, in Japan, where a big earthquake it come quite often. Uh, because the system is very expensive, of course. And there's one big disadvantage or drawback about the active control system. That is, if there's something wrong with the control system, the power or energy I input to the system, to the, the control system, will acting in such a way that they can destroy the building. Of course, the objective to install the active control system on top of the building like this in Japan is to reduce the vibration under the earthquake and under the wind. But, but if the programmer or there's something wrong with the system, remember they has their own power. They can act in the force to the building in such a way that it will make your building vibrate or move larger, move a lot and can destroy your building. There are possibility like that. That's why it's not popular because it's quite dangerous. Frankly speaking, it's like that. Therefore, we cannot easily find the application of the active control in other countries, except in Japan, I think. Okay, this idea of active control system. There's a video clip to show the control system ready, but I think it's the idea, I don't know. Do I have that? I have the MR damper, but I forgot it's uh, how it's looking. Like. Oh, this one. It did more. Maybe this one. Oh, let me try to open with this one. Uh, this this could be the end of my explanation. Okay, you see. If I turn on the active control system is the, the figure below. But if I turn off, it's like that. You see the, the movement of the small mass on the left and on the right, right? Try to prevent the building the model from the vibration. This is active control system. It's quite wonderful. Theoretically speaking, it's really effective, but practically speaking, it's dangerous. That's why it's not popular. Okay, I could end my discussion today here and
I'm sorry, today I don't have the quiz, but next time, okay, you please prepare yourself for the quiz during the class. Okay, so far, anybody has the question or have some difficulty to learn this course, please suggest and recommend. You are all welcome. Okay, any, please. No? Okay, if you don't have any questions, uh, I will use just a few minutes to tell you more about the way we will learn about this subject together. Of course, I will use the online materials in the video. Oh, I forgot to record. It should, okay, it's not called automatically. I will share you later to the link of the video clip so that you can follow up if you cannot catch up some part of my explanation. And also I have also last year, last year a video clip so that I will all share with you. I don't know. I never see my video clip before as well. I don't know my explanation this year or last year may be different or maybe be the same. Uh, if you want to, I, I can provide you the link. I will have, we will have the, the, the exam. Not only the quiz, the link, the class. You will have the exam with me after we finish the first part. Maybe allow the uh, beginning of March. I think if you take you three hours, I will provide you some previous exam so that you can expect some, how about what, what could happen to the question you will be asked by me. Okay. And I'm thinking about um, ask you to do some assignment. If you prefer to, I will. But if you don't want, just the exam should be enough. And if you want the, uh, the assignment, it would be some how using the MATLAB, I think, solving some problems. I will provide some real problems and ask you to do with a single degree freedom system and solving them for me, something like this. Okay, we, we have can of time we will discuss about this again when we go deeper and deeper okay and today if you don't have any questions i would like to end my discussion here and hope to see you next week on tuesday morning okay no no question right okay so